الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض Respected Imam Brothers and sisters here at Masjid Al-Ghufran Masjid which is very dear to our hearts here in Tamantun, Dr. Ismail, district of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We speak tonight on a subject of tremendous importance at this time. And we pray that Allah, in His kindness, might take these words far and wide. But in particular, to the people of Rome, to the people therefore of Greece, and of Bulgaria, and of Armenia, and of Romania, and of Poland, and of Hungary, and of Belarus, and most of all, of Russia. That he might take this word, these words to that part of Rome which is located in the Arab world. The Arab Christians of Syria, the Copt of Egypt, and that through these words, Clarity might come into their minds concerning what is the authentic position of Islam, of events now unfolding in the world. I mean, if we want to ask the question, who is Rome? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prophesied that in akhirul zaman or in the last stage we Muslims will make a sulf with room. I have to use the Arabic word because they don't translate it honestly. A truth is hudna, not sulh. Sulh is peace, and therefore a peace treaty. And a peace treaty indicates an alliance. So Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, did not say, that we will make a truce with Rome. Go back and do your homework. He said that we will make a sulh, an alliance with Rome. Now that requires us to go back to the Quran. You never study a hadith by commencing your studies with the hadith. That is dangerous. That is wrong. In order to study a hadith, you must begin with the Quran. Then shaitan cannot take you for a ride. Who is Rome? With whom we are going to make an alliance in Akhiru Zaman? Who is Rome? This is our methodology. What is yours? And so we begin with the Quran. And we cannot go wrong with the Quran. 
And Rome is very largely written in the Quran. Even though the word Rome is to be found only once in the whole Quran. But the chapter or the surah is entitled by that word. Surah to Rome. Billions of Muslims, billions of Muslims over 1400 years have recited Surah to Rome and have re recited the words Alif La Meem Ba'na'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Alif La Meem Ghulibatir Rum Fi Adna Al Ard Rome has been defeated in a land close by. And so Rome existed at the time when the Quran was revealed. I ask you, was Washington an American city at the time when the Quran was revealed? and London and Paris <laughs> and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the Anglo-American Zionist Alliance have you no sense these did not exist at the time when the Quran was revealed Rome however existed at the time when the Quran was revealed and Rome suffered defeat and it's not difficult to recognize it because Fiat Nal'ab in a land close by they suffered defeat so who is Rome? and then the Quran went on to speak and to say وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ but after their defeat, they are going to be victorious. You watch and see. How long will it take for the victory to come? In just a few years. You don't have to wait a hundred years. And so said, so done. This prophecy, divine prophecy in the Quran was fulfilled. And Rome was victorious in a few years' time. So now who is Rome? If you have five ringgits worth of integrity, I ask of you tonight. And for the last time because I don't have time to waste with those who have eyes and yet cannot see. Their, their minds seem to be blocked. Who is Rome? Answer. Rome is the Byzantine Orthodox Christian Empire of Eastern Europe and of the Arab world which had its, its capital in Constantinople. And if you do not know where is Constantinople, I suggest you go and meet a man named Mustafa Kamal, who for mysterious reasons has made it illegal against the law <laughs> to use the name Constantinople. Get lost, Mustafa Kamal get lost. This is room. There is no other honest answer. The rest are answers which should be sent by Federal Express to a place called Disneyland. That's not scholarship. Then the Quran continued to say Lillahil Amr decision making in respect of victory and defeat is with Allah not with the Security Council of the United Nations no sir 
ولا الله لله الامر من قبل ومن بعد on that previous occasion it was Allah who decided victory for Rome and in the next occasion it is Allah who will decide victory for Rome that victory is yet to come وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ and on that day when Rome is victorious Muslims will celebrate بِنَصْرِ in recognition of Allah's help for victory يَنْصُرُ بِمَنْ يَشَاءُ يَنْصُرُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمُ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah helps to victory whomsoever Allah chooses and Allah is powerful and Allah is merciful. So this is Rome. But the hadith says that you will make an alliance with Rome in Akhiru Zaman. So who is Rome today? <laughs> it cannot be the United States of America. Don't waste our time we are fed up with your sniping it cannot be Britain and France and NATO we are fed up with your foolish sniping you have lost the war that is a scholarly war because you don't have scholarship and we are advising you what is the method of scholarship Rome has to be located in that part of the world which is Orthodox Christian. Christianity is divided into two main camps. One is Rome, which is the Orthodox Christian world. And with that Orthodox Christian world, we have a positive relationship because when they were victorious we celebrated and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the Quran about a people in time to come who would be closest in love and affection to us Muslims and who would say we are Christians we are Nasara there are two camps in the Christian world. Which one is it which will have the most love and affection for us in time to come? And for me, this is Akhiru Zaman. And the answer is clear. It has to be Rome. Why cannot be, why cannot, why can it not be the other Christian world? The one which has NATO as its military arm and is encircling Russia. Let us go again to the Quran because woe unto you if you neglect the Quran as a scholar. If you choose to turn to guidance to the New Straight Times or the new the television station or some political advisor somewhere or the other and you neglect to go to the Quran for your primary source of guidance you will pay a price for that the Quran speaks and I believe here in Masjid al Bufran we have already explained this passage of the Quran it is in Surah Al-Ma'idah and I don't have the time to expand so you'll have to forgive me if you're a contract. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, you who have faith in the one God. La tattakhithu al-yahuda wa al-nasara awliya ba'aduhum awliya ba'ad. Do not take such Jews. Allah is not speaking about all Jews. 
And do not take such Christians, Allah is not speaking about all Christians. Do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies who who are themselves friends and allies of each other. The Quran is telling you that in time to come there is going to be a strange and mysterious reconciliation between Jews and Christians and the emergence of a Judeo-Christian alliance. When that happens, don't take them as your friends and allies. If you do, you're going to have a surprise in the grave. After you are put down in the grave and they bury you, you don't even have a cell phone now. When the angels come and you confident that you are a believer in the one God, a Muslim, and Allah had commanded you, Wala tamutunna illa one to Muslim, do not die except as Muslim. Allah says, Whosoever from amongst you turn to them. The Judeo-Christian Alliance, which today is the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance. Whosoever from amongst you turn to them with friendship and alliance, you now belong to them. You no longer belong to us. So in your grave, you will learn to your horror. You're not recognized as a Muslim. No, you've lost your Islam. You didn't even know. So alliance with Rome cannot possibly be with those Christians. Has that alliance come into being? Has part of the Christian world recon reconciled with part of the Jewish world? Yes, it has. Unless you've been eating roti chanai and drinking tetarik all the time and not bothering to think and study, that alliance has come into being. It is that alliance which controls power in the world today and which tells the government which way to vote in the United Nations. And if you don't vote the correct way, your money will start losing value, your economy will collapse and this and that and the other. <laughs> and you think you're free. No, you're not free. You're the slave. The government, not the people, the government. So that alliance has emerged. And while we cannot speak to the governments, we can speak to the people here in the masjid. And Allah has commanded you, do not be their friends and allies. For if you become their friends and allies, you now belong to them. You no longer belong to us. In the law, surely Allah does not provide guidance for a wicked people. So now, who is wrong today? We begin because of the Quran. Because of the Quran, because of the methodology which we have adopted, we can eliminate the Western, the Western alliance of the United States and Britain and France and Australia and NATO and so on, who are all serving the state of Israel. Who is wrong? <laughs> That's the question. With whom we we'll make an alliance in Akhiru Zaman? Is it Greece? Is it Bulgaria? Is it Armenia? <laughs> Is it Poland? Is it Hungary? We ask you to answer us 
and to answer us honestly and with integrity and don't go hiding behind a mango tree. Because they don't want to be honest in the answer. They cannot accept the truth. But I have said, you can kill a man. That's easy. But you cannot kill the truth. Those of us, Alhamdulillah, there are so many who stand up for the truth. We are not afraid to die. When will you understand that? When we preach the truth, we do so without fear of death. You can kill and kill and kill and kill, but you cannot kill the truth. There will always be servants of Allah. There will always be followers of Nabi Muhammad remaining in the world to proclaim the truth. We say that it is the people of Rome who should tell us who is Rome today. Not for us, they, they should tell us. And when the Ottomans conquered Constantinople in the year 1453, I think, they, the people of Rome, they are the ones who then recognize that the capital of Rome is no longer Constantinople. Sultan Muhammad Fatih could say as long as he wanted, as many times as he wanted, he's the Sultan of Rome, that's nonsense. That's rubbish. They, the people of Rome, now recognize Moscow as the capital of Rome. If you defer with them, what status do you have to decide for them? <laughs> Who is Rome? When you belong, you don't belong to Rome. They, the people of the Rome, they choose and they recognize Russia to be the capital of Rome today. And so the hadith of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, who speaks of an alliance with Rome in Akhir zaman is pointing clearly to Russia. Oh, but how can we have an alliance with Russia when Russia acted with such brutality and oppression in destroying the jihad in Chechenia? Oh, oh, I see. You were talking about that Saudi engineered jihad. The one that was cooked up in Washington. That's the one you're talking about? The one that was financed by the CIA? That's the one you're talking about? Come on! Why are you so silent now? The evidence is open. Even the people of Chechenia will tell you. The Americans were here. We got our weapons from them. So what is Russia to do? When the United States is trying to destabilize Russia with a Yankee Jihad, another Yankee Jihad, you're going to blame Russia for responding to protect itself from attack from the United States? No. That cannot be evidence to refute the claim that Russia is Rome today. When we recognize Russia as Rome today, we now turn to the rest of the Hadith. And now we find something strange and mysterious. Remember we have a methodology with which to study Hadith. And that is, we never begin with the Hadith, we begin with the Qur'an. We take all the ayat in the Qur'an pertaining to that subject, all. And this is not a work for schoolboys. This is a work for scholars. 
with patience and men of insight who can connect the connection between ayat. And when we have brought all the verses of the Quran connected with the subject and brought them together as a harmonious whole and located that which binds them together as a harmonious whole, we have penetrated this system of meaning of the subject. Then we go to the rest of that, to the ahadith, all the ahadith pertaining to the subject. And all those ahadith which are in harmony with the Quran, we now add them to our database. So we get an enlarged system of meaning. And it is in that enlarged system of meaning that we now turn to this hadith to study it. That's our methodology. What is yours? The me this hadith says that you'll make an alliance with Rome. But then the rest of the hadith says that you and Rome are going to wage a war and you'll be victorious. So there is no conflict between the first part and the second part. They're in harmony. But then comes the strange part that someone from the party of Rome will stand up and declare the cross is victorious. And someone from the Muslim side will get up and say, no, you're wrong, Allah is victorious. And that's going to start a war between the two. And they're going to have to fight it out that one third of the Muslim army is going to run away. I wonder who wrote this. I wonder who did it. One third of that Muslim army is going to run away. And Allah will never forgive them. And one third of that army is going to become shuhada. And they'll be the greatest of all shuhada. And the last one third will be victorious. I wonder who wrote that. This second half of the hadith negates the first half. It is as though since the first half could not be erased, no. Let us add to the hadith and put a second part which will now erase the effect of the first part. And so all those who would be unsound in judgment will now concentrate their attention only on the second part of the hadith and say, no need for alliance with Rome. But we say, when we use our methodology, then at the end of the day, and we have not as yet completed our study of the subject, no. At the end of the day, we will confirm that we were right in putting a question mark behind this part of the hadith. A question mark. And so we're going to have an alliance with Rome in Akhirul Zaman. And in a previous lecture, we described that battle in which we and Rome are going to fight together. The hadith is in the Sunan Nafabi Dawood and uh, you may have heard it already, but if not, well, you hear it one more time to that. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam is speaking to his companion Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala and he's giving us a timeline of events. And he said, Umran ubaytil maqdis qarabu yatrim. Event number one in the timeline is when Jerusalem is flourishing, center stage, which is it today. Number two, Kharabu Yatrib. At that time when Jerusalem is center stage, flourishing, built up, take a look at Medina. Medina plays absolutely no role whatsoever in the affairs of the world. Not even in the affairs of the Muslim world. Not even in the affairs of the Arabian Peninsula. It is in a state of forlorn desolation. 
That's all. A place of pilgrimage, nothing else. Kharab o Yatsrib, Khurujul Malhama. Number three, event number three, is that when these two are in place, the next thing that you all will experience will be the Malhama, which is the great war. The Christians call it Armageddon. This great war will far supreme, far uh, exceed what the world witnessed in the First World War and the Second World War. Because in this war, the Prophet said al Islam to Islam that birds flying in the sky will fall down, indicating, in my opinion, that the, good, the birds cannot navigate, like the bees cannot navigate. So something or someone is corrupting the atmosphere. What could that be? Because of the cell phones that you now have, I can see one right in front of me. You would know <laughs> that all around us now, everywhere, you have these electro electromagnetic or electronic waves all around us. And because of these electronic waves, through the cell phone towers, the atmosphere is now becoming more and more corrupted. But when nuclear war takes place, and it's not one bomb in Hiroshima and one in Nagasaki, no. This will be the world war. <laughs> So this will be thousands of nuclear weapons, thousands of nuclear weapons. Can you imagine what's going to happen to the atmosphere? This is my opinion and Allah knows best. That this is the implication of the statement, birds will fall down. In other words, there can be no electronic component of warfare after that. Aeroplanes cannot fly, cruise missiles cannot fly to the air. So after the Malhama, wars can only be fought on the land and on the sea, no longer in the air. This is our perspective from Islamic eschatology. If you have a different one in Christian or Jewish, or Hindu or Buddhist eschatology, do please share it with us. This is ours. The Prophet then went on to say, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, Khurujul Malhama Fathul Constantinia. That after the Malhama takes place, when most of mankind will die, then the conquest of Constantinople will take place. They have banned my lectures now in Turkey because the lie has been busted <laughs> thanks to the internet. Turkey has been brainwashed with great sophistication. <laughs> the Turkish people have been brainwashed washed to believe that the conquest of Constantinople took place, the one prophesied by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu took place in 1453 with Sultan Muhammad Fatih. So it comes as a rude shock to them that that is a lie. The conquest of Constantinople prophesied by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is yet to occur. So they banned me now in Turkey. And my answer is, you can shut the door, but Allah can open it. So our duty is simply to teach and to proclaim the truth with humility. Why is it so important? The conquest of Constantinople taking place immediately after the alliance with Rome. 
sorry, immediately after the Malhama or the Armageddon. It is because the conquest of Constantinople is of such strategic importance that we have to go back now to Islam, Russia, Crimea, Ukraine. That is the context that allows us to understand events which have been unfolding. They had a master plan for Russia. But those who are our critics are such a people of such intellectual simplicity. Some of our critics are so very simple-minded that they cannot even distinguish between Russia and the Soviet Union. And for them, Russia is still a communist country. I don't think we need bother about criticisms which come from such people because they are not the people of knowledge. The attack on Rome was on two fronts. The first one was recognizing that Islam represented the greatest threat to Dajjal and Israel. So the attack would be on Islam's relationship with Rome so that we will never have an alliance with Rome. And so that is how the Ottoman Empire came into being. Sure, the Ottoman Empire did many things that are praiseworthy. It's not necessary for me to remind you of that. Scholarship requires us to direct attention to the real reasons why the Ottoman Empire came into being. They came into being to stab a dagger on behalf of the world of Islam into the back of Rome again and again and again and again. They came with this bogus doctrine that Islam enjoins eternal warfare against the non-Muslim world. Eternal warfare, eternal jihad. And so the Ottoman Empire was established for eternal jihad. They built themselves for continuous war. And in the Quran, Allah says, Wallahu yad'u ila daris salam. And Allah calls, and Allah calls to a world of peace. But when they wage war, this war machine called the Ottoman Empire, they wage war continuously on Rome. That's why they came into being. And they wage war to eventually take Constantinople, which is the heart of Rome. And then to plunge the deepest knife of all into the back of Rome by taking the greatest cathedral of Rome, Hagia Sophia, or Hagia Sophia, which had functioned as the greatest cathedral for continuously for 1,000 years and shamelessly and disgracefully and sinfully and as long as I live I will continue to use these words. Let it be written in my book that I will have to face Allah with on judgment day. Disgracefully, shamefully, sinfully took that that cathedral and transformed it into a masjid to the eternal shame and disgrace of this ummah. And whoever is proud and happy that the Christian cathedral has become a masjid, stay away from me, I don't need your company. They did more than that. I have time to speak of only one more thing. 
to ensure that in the hearts of the people of Rome there be eternal hatred for Islam. Is it the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad that when you defeat an, an enemy on the battlefield, the Anfal or the spoils of war, the Anfal. There is a chapter of the Quran called Al Anfal. The Anfal that the Ottomans defied, de, uh, demanded was that the defeated people must pay them tribute. Well, if it is being paid in gold dinars, no problem with that. But no. They also wanted that the tribute must include something called a boy tribute. That the people of Greece will have to provide them with so many young Greek boys. And these are not six and seven years of age children. These are boys who have already reached the age of discussion. Where they can commit sin, they have the right to freedom. The right to remain Christian. They are 10, they 11, they are 12 years of age. And when the Greek parents and the Armenian parents and the Russian parents provided these boys to the Ottoman, they would then convert them to Islam. Young men, raise your hand, your finger like this and make the declaration. And if they don't, they kill. If they don't, they kill. If you still want to honor your Ottoman Empire, even after this disgraceful display, which is not in the Sunnah, no, and which leaves eternal hatred in the hearts of the people, then stay away from Imran Hussein. Don't bother to listen to my questions. Just get away from me. Because you are a brainwashed people. What more can I do? There are the rest of the world of Islam who want to listen and to learn. So get away from us. You people with brainwashed heads who cannot understand. So simple things. Why can't you understand? that this was deliberately designed demanding the boy tribute after every war and they're constantly at war so they're getting a constant supply of Christian boys and these Christian boys are introduced into Islam they don't have a choice and then they are trained to become the elite fighting force of the Ottoman Empire. Europe could not afford a standing army. No, they didn't have a standing army. But the Ottomans had a standing army of these Christian boys who are now Muslims and who are called the Janissaries and who personally belong to the Sultan. This is how they build their fighting machine. And so the people of Greece have to suffer seeing their own sons fighting them. And the people of Russia. So this is part of the strategy to ensure that there can never be an alliance between Islam and Rome. And there will be eternal hatred in the hearts of Rome for Muslims. The other part of the strategy was to cut Russia down to size. So Russia after the Malhama will not be a power. It is Russia after the Hal Malhama that they are concerned about our enemy. So what they did was in 1907 Britain and France embraced Russia. They used honey come in a triple alliance, Britain, France and Russia. And the honey that they used to trap Russia was that if we win the war that's coming with the Ottoman Empire, you will get Constantinople, which is what Russia wants. 
But they promised Russia one thing to the front door and they took it back to the back door, like what they did to the Arabs. These are people with PhDs in deception. If they tell you that the sun is shining, Morris Herman, who is sitting here, will tell you, go outside and look up in the sky, see whether the sun is shining. Don't believe them. Morris, who's interviewed me many times in the past, and he's here tonight to interview me one more time. When the Russian army had fought in the First World War and had suffered the most losses, and the brunt of the kill were Russians, and they were now winning the war, and the Ottoman Empire was collapsing. And the Russian army is only an arm's length away from Constantinople. They don't want Russia to get Constantinople. No. Nope. So what did they do? Russian Jews organized and executed the Bolshevik Revolution, which overthrew the Russian monarchy. They killed the Tsar, the whole family, overthrew the government and took Russia out of the war. So the Russian army had to stop in its tracks and could not go to Constantinople. In other words, the Russian Jews stabbed Russia in the back. They did more than that. They brought communism. Communism is not Russia. These dum-dums don't understand. Communism was created to destroy Russia. Why don't these dum-dums understand it? Communism is not Russian. Communism was created to destroy Russia. To destroy the Russian Orthodox Church. So they brought communism and the Soviet Union. And for the, last, for the next 60, 70 years, this Zionist created entity called the Soviet Union waged war on religion, waged war on the Russian Orthodox Church, killed the priests, closed down the monasteries and churches and so on. 60, 70 years. And then when the appropriate time came and Israel came into being, it is this same Soviet Union which opened the doors for millions of Russian Jews to now migrate to Israel. If you go to Israel today, you might believe you're in Russia. <laughs> so many people speaking Russian. These are the Russian Jews. And then the Soviet Union six years after Israel came into being, did something strange and mysterious. Crimea is Russian territory. Crimea is a part of Russia. The Soviet Union decided to give Crimea as a gift to Ukraine. Why did they do that? The historians don't tell you, so let Imran tell you. They gave Crimea to Ukraine in order to stab Russia in the back one more time. Because if Russia loses Crimea, it will enhance Israel's security. The Russian Navy is based in Crimea and there is a straight line from Crimea to Constantinople to get out of the Black Sea and to get into the Mediterranean Sea you got to pass through the Bosphorus and the city of Constantinople is located right there on the Bosphorus. So they gave Crimea as a gift to Ukraine. 
They never bothered to consult the people of Crimea and get their consent. No. They never bothered to seek the permission of the Russian people. No. But Washington doesn't want to hear that. The foolish man who now sits in the White House of the United States. The foolish man who would like to pretend that he's a man of wisdom. He doesn't want to hear. <laughs> but what are the rights of the Russian people? Were they not violated? Do they not have the right to correct Iran and recover the territory which was unjustly taken away from them on Israel's behalf? Obama doesn't want to hear that. It's inconvenient for them. But in this masjid, we will, we will expose whether it's convenient to you or not. They did more than that. Not only did they give Crimea to Ukraine, but earlier on they gave Eastern Ukraine. Eastern, part of the now Eastern Ukraine was Russian. It was Russian. And the Soviet Union gave it as a gift to Ukraine. Why is it being given to Ukraine? Answer is that when the proper moment comes, the same people who brought the Soviet Union into being now have a method by which they can cause it to collapse. The method that they're using now in Venezuela, popular demonstrations, they did it in Egypt, they did it in Tunisia. They are masters of that. They did it with the Soviet Union. I used to think that the Soviet Union collapsed because of Allah, Allah's kindness. But I was wrong. <laughs> no, it was the Zionists who brought down the Soviet Union. Because they didn't need it anymore. Like tomorrow they wouldn't need you anymore, Saudi Arabia. And they wouldn't need you anymore, Islamabad. When will you understand that? They just throw you to the dogs. You served them long enough. So they brought down the Soviet Union. Why? So that Ukraine might emerge as an independent state. That's danger for Russia. They prepared the way. And now Ukraine emerges as an independent state. So the rope is around Russia's neck now. And from that day, when the Soviet Union collapsed, until yesterday, the relationship between Russia and Ukraine was always problematic. But, the people of Ukraine still had the good sense and wisdom to appoint a government that was pro-Russian. The Zionists decided it's time for us to use our, you know, the street demonstrations. And last October, November, December, the world witnessed Caracas all over again. And eventually, the Zionists got what they wanted. You have the money and you can send in your special people, snipers who will kill and so on, throw petrol bombs and so on. And eventually they got what they wanted. They created enough havoc. May Allah protect Malaysia from that. Amin. Amin. And the president of Ukraine fled. He's a democratically elected according to your method, Mr. Obama, according to your system. He's a legal, legally elected president of Ukraine. And he had to flee. And these hypocrites in Washington and London and Paris, who would like us to believe that they are honorable men, they are not. Instead of standing on the side of the legally appointed president and demanding the rule of law, they all showed their colors 
as hypocrites in immediately recognizing the new government in Ukraine. The new government in Ukraine is anti-Russia. That's what they wanted. That's why they brought down the Soviet Union to bring in a Ukraine into being as independent state and then to eventually get an anti-Russian government in Ukraine. If by Allah's kindness Putin had not intervened and been so spectacularly successful, this is what the plan would have been. The new government in Ukraine would have joined NATO and Russia could not stop it. And when the new government in Ukraine joined NATO, NATO will then send its armed forces into Ukraine. It could be, include nuclear weapons. Then Ukraine will pick a fight with Russia and decide that Russia must now vacate Crimea. Shut down your naval base. The rope is now tightened around your neck. Russia has to put its tail between its legs and withdraw its fleet, Black Sea fleet from Crimea. Russia is no longer a naval power. Quick crack, you finish. And Israel will celebrate. That was the master plan. But Allah planned, and Allah's plan was successful. And it is time for the Muslim world to recognize and to see, I cannot influence governments, so what can I do? Don't bother, you waste your time in governments. But the people can understand that this was Allah's plan. They planned, the enemy planned for so long. And at the last moment, Allah intervened. And Putin was able to get the people of Crimea to vote in a referendum. And they voted 90 something percent in favor of returning to Russia. They were a part of Russia and they want to return to Russia. So Putin was successful in delivering to the Zionist movement the first defeat it has ever suffered, significant defeat in the more than 100 years since the Zionist movement was established. If that is not a sign from Allah, it's time for you to wake up. Putin is now succeeding in Eastern Ukraine as well because they are barking like dogs in Washington and London and Paris barking. It is Russia which is doing it. It is Russia which is doing it in eastern Ukraine. Oh, but when the Ukrainian government sent the Ukrainian armed forces into eastern Ukraine, they don't want to fight. They say we will not fight our own people. They refuse to fight. So the only way that the government of Ukraine could now stamp down the insurrection, the popular resistance in eastern Ukraine is by calling on Washington, come and send your Marines. And then what will Putin do? The, Ameri the Russian armed forces are amassed on the Ukrainian border. So the Ukrainian soldiers are refusing to fight their own people for two reasons. Number one, why should we do your dirty work for you? We're not going to fight our own people. That's not what soldiers are for. And number two, if we make the mistake of using guns on these Russian-speaking Ukrainians, what will the Russian army do to us tomorrow? And they have already said, Putin has already said, we are going to intervene to defend our people. He's already said it plainly. The writing is on the wall. Putin has won a victory. 
in Crimea, whether governments like it or not, whether governments vote this way or that way, is now irrelevant because all we all know that they have to vote where the butter is. Putin is on his road to a second victory in Ukraine. And they can't take defeat after defeat. So the writing is on the wall. Exactly as Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam has said, that we are now moving towards the Malhara. How long would it take? I don't know. And you don't know. But the Malhama is coming. How should we respond? The answer is, if you are living on the doorstep of the Malhama, is it not time for you to devote attention to the study of the subject? To the study of Ilmu Akhiru Zaman? I leave you with this that if you care and respect the intellect that Allah gave you, the rational faculty that Allah gave you, it's time to wake up and to begin the serious study of the subject of Ilmu Akhiru Zaman. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim wa tub alina ya mawlana inna ka anta tawabu alim. Bi rahmatika ya arhamu rahmin. Ameen.